945. More than a million troops from the Indian Army served in World War I, tens of thousands of them on the Western Front. The wounded were taken to a most unlikely hospital, the Royal Pavilion in Brighton. And now permanent exhibition has opened there to commemorate the 12,000 soldiers who were treated in the town. Summer 1915 and King George V, Emperor of India, visits Indian troops wounded on the Western Front and awards the Victoria Cross to this man, Jemadar Mir Dast. The location, Brighton's ornate Royal Pavilion, built in 1815 as a royal retreat, converted into a wartime emergency hospital. This is one of the very first war propaganda films, shown in India to help counter German claims that Indian troops sent to Europe were being badly treated. Quite the reverse. It was given out uh, in, in, in rather subtle terms, it, it wasn't a direct fib, uh, that the pavilion was still uh, an occupied royal palace. Um, and that George V, who was both king and emperor of India, of course, in 1914, um, was giving up a palace that he was actually occupying for his wounded Indian sepoys. This, of course, um, was not the case. The pavilion had been in municipal ownership since 1850. Perhaps the authorities chose the pavilion for its exotic Asian-style architecture and decoration. Maybe they thought it would make injured Indian soldiers feel at home. Either way, they went to great lengths to adapt it for its new role. The medical facilities were state-of-the-art. The dome next door to the pavilion, now a concert hall, was turned into one vast hospital ward. So were many of the elegant rooms in the pavilion itself, each ward carefully segregated by race and religion. There's plenty of photographic evidence because tens of thousands of postcards were printed to send back to India and to show the locals in Brighton what was happening. More propaganda. Postcards were used to reproduce the photographs that were taken and you have to remember that postcards at this point were very much the new media of the day. They were relatively cheap, they could be sent to people and moved around. Some of the soldiers were taken sightseeing in London. In Brighton itself they attracted a lot of attention, not all of it welcome. After the war, in the hills above Brighton, they decided to commemorate the Indian soldiers who died in the service of the King Emperor. And so they built this. It's called the Chattery Memorial, a word that means umbrella, and it's built on the site of the funeral pyres where the 53 Sikh and Hindu soldiers who died in Brighton hospitals were cremated, or in the words of the inscription, passed through the fire. Each June, there's a commemorative service here, organised by a local school teacher, Davinda Dillon. It reminds us that they were there, they did something for us. Um, and, and we keep that memory alive every year, and we've been doing that uh, since 1950. Today, the Indian invasion of the Royal Pavilion is largely forgotten. Though in 1914, the local paper likened it to a chapter in a romance and predicted generations of Brightonians yet unborn will marvel at these days. Nick Hyam, BBC News, Brighton. Now, it's been a part of our...